Alrighty, so I'm a little bit late to this update uh, developer notice, but I was not at home, so I didn't really want to do it um, all in one go while I wasn't at the house. So I'm back. Anyways, uh, <laughs> here we go. So, um, hello, Knights. This is the director Koo from the Seven Deadly Sins Grand Cross team. He is the, if I'm not mistaken, he's the community director for the Korean version of the game. So I think what they're doing because of the, you know, because the games being so close to each other as far as updates go, um, I think that basically he's going to start writing uh, the developer notes for both or both the Korean and JP builds and the global builds and then I think the the global build uh, or the global dev notes will probably get reviewed and sort of edited by I would imagine CM gold or some of the somebody else in the the global dev team so that way they can make sure that it's all relevant to the global version <laughs> but I don't know could be wrong there anyways. All of this pretty much up here. He's just kind of thanking everybody for participating in the anniversary festival and everything like that. Um, and just talking about how, you know, they're happy that it's the second anniversary and that they're working on Ragnarok a bit, which is pretty cool. Um, he does say right here today, we'd like to share two exciting uh, things in more detail and some upcoming event news. We've also prepared a small gift to celebrate the month of July. So keep on reading. <laughs> so let's go ahead and hop into this thing. There is a little bit to go over. This honestly isn't the biggest dev note, but uh, I think it has a pretty decent amount of information. So, uh, Like we shared in the developer notes in January, the development team is trying to minimize the gap between the Korea slash Japan uh, and global builds. We are keeping the draw pool lineup as similar as possible to provide a fair and fun game experience for all of our knights around the world. Also, we promise... Uh, as we promised, we are keeping the festival banner release order the same. So I think that is to confirm uh, that because they tried to mess with the order of things on global during the uh, Assault Mode Meliodas and Escanor sort of festivals, they on J or on the global version they tried to release the Assault Mode Meliodas banner first, and people were not happy at all about that. So they are trying to reiterate here that uh, they are going to make sure that the lineup is completely the same so that way there is nothing to complain about <laughs> uh, during this process the fact that the anniversaries and half anniversaries fall on different dates for each build was concerning since both the global and Korean slash JP builds have their own anniversaries and half anniversaries, we had to come up with a way to make it more fair or to make it fair and fun for all nights. Uh, so we have decided to make all festivals to our nights uh, available to our nights worldwide. The anniversaries of the global build will be called the 7DS anniversary or 7DS half anniversary, and they will come with fun and new game or fun and new game modes. The anniversaries of the Korea slash Japan build will be called Grand Cross Anniversary to celebrate the initial release of Grand Cross. Huh. This will be applied in the same way in the Korea slash JP build. There will be some difference based on each schedule, but all celebrations will provide anniversary events, cool characters, and game modes. Please stay tuned. So. The big thing here is I'm not sure if they're still going to be trying to catch completely up to the G, uh, the JP slash uh, Korean versions of the game or not. Uh, I think right now we are literally like a month behind, which honestly is a pretty sweet spot that we're in as far as right now goes, because we can kind of see what the next two banners are. Um, as far as like us on the global build goes and we can try to see whether or not those characters are actually going to be worth summoning for um, So you won't really you can get a little bit of insider information kind of is what I'm trying to get off here um, Which is kind of nice because we already know that the next banner for us is the new blue Oslo and Hawk who is pretty much just a support unit for winged king so for like 99% of the players, you know, it's pretty much a skip banner unless you either just really like Winged King or, you know, I don't know, you just uh, maybe it might be a collector who wants all of the units or whatever the case may be. Um, most people can already kind of discern whether or not uh, the JP and Korea slash or like players have already tested him and they pretty much know what he does, whether or not he, they're going to want to summon for him and, you know, etc. So I think it's pretty cool that we're in a spot where we can see what's coming and we have enough time to really determine on whether or not we need to skip that for the, the banner after that because like we already know that Ragnarok comes out right after uh, this festival ends for Purgatory Bond. 
So yeah, and I don't know if they're planning on getting it like on the same release schedules to where we're going to be getting the updates at the same time as the JP and Korean builds, but uh, it doesn't seem likely unless the, the JP and Korean build just like completely skips a two week period at some point um, because they're going to have to do that twice for us to completely catch up and it just doesn't seem very likely unless on the global version of the game they end up bundling two banners together again, uh, which will probably not be <laughs> widely accepted by the majority of the player base every time they seem to do that uh everybody seems to hate it so yeah i don't know i don't really mind being completely caught up um or if we're a, a month behind i would actually prefer if we stayed a month behind just so we can get a little bit of more uh information before the updates come out for us but that's just me personally uh so i don't know it's kind of interesting the other thing to take away here is that there's pretty much going to be guaranteed at least four festivals per year because there's going to be a 7ds festival a half seven or like a half year anniversary 7ds festival and then there's going to be a grand cross festival and then a half year grand cross festival for the other you know for their the anniversaries of the jp and korea builds as well so um it, it hopefully they will space those out um, good enough to where there's going to be time in between these banners to kind of save up your gems because at the moment the global version of the game which I mean the, the JP version of the game has been kind of in the same boat but they've had a little bit more time between some of the banners than we have um, on global we literally had three festivals in a row two collab banners and then we basically started <laughs> the Purgatory Bond Festival. So there has been a lot going on and a lot to summon for on the global version of the game. So hopefully if they space all of this stuff out, uh, there should be at least a month or two in between each festival. So that way it gives us time to save and kind of determine whether or not we want to summon for the next festival or not. And especially if we stay a month behind, we'll be able to see what the next festival is uh, that the JP and Korean versions of the game get. Um, beforehand which i mean i guess i guess if they're going to try to celebrate um the 7ds anniversary at the same time um it would need to be at the same time for both builds so maybe they are going to try to like i don't know catch up completely it's just hard to say how they're going to actually do that without like either skipping content for two weeks on the jp and korea versions of the game or you know just bundling stuff together for us so it's going to be uh an interesting time to see how they end up pulling that off but um i don't know we'll just have to end up seeing second uh we hope that you were excited about the tower of trials and final boss in the new update this week we will uh we were <laughs> While we were setting the build update schedule back in January, we analyzed all night's play patterns through the new events and content to provide the best experience possible for you. We're pleased to announce that the new update plan for you to enjoy something new each week. Uh, because each night plays 7DS at their own pace, we thought hard about how we are going to plan this out. Uh, we found out that knights get bored after playing everything within the first week of a new update, while at the same time some knights felt burdened by the amount of all the new content. The global team has plans to spread out the new content, uh, new contents in appropriate amounts to give you something new almost every week without being too demanding. The Tower of Trials and upcoming new, new slash legend boss battle event or boss battles. Final boss battles. We'll follow this new plan. We'll share more details, uh, detailed schedules in the future update notices. Please stay tuned. So the biggest thing here that I I can kind of gather from this is that they're they're basically saying that <laughs> some people either run through all of the content at one time and they don't have anything else to do uh, for basically like a two week period because they basically do it in like two week shifts almost where they release a whole bunch of new content and then they have an off week and then after that they do a whole lot of new content as well <laughs> um i think what they're going to do is basically try to split the load in half and instead of having an off week they'll just do half of the content that they were planning on releasing and then the other half of it and then they'll come out with new content and then half the other half of that content 
Uh, so that way it kind of spreads it out further so that way there's not like, for example, in the game right now we have like a ton of events and stuff like that that you kind of have to like log in and uh, either grind every day or just work on so that way you can gather the materials to exchange the, or to trade them out with the exchange shop and stuff like that. And having to do all of that at one time every day kind of adds up to your playtime for the day. And I think that's kind of what they're trying to avoid is they, they think that players, um, I guess people are probably not wanting to be on the game for that long of a period. So if they can cut it down to make it to where you're, you know, you're doing your dailies, you're doing whatever you want to do. Um, the events aren't going to keep you like tied to the game every single day <laughs> for even longer, um, which I think is kind of smart. If they spread it out more, it's going to make it seem like there's more stuff uh, for you to do without it being like overwhelming because some of the stuff um, like some of the boss battles and stuff like that where you have to grind out the materials for the exchange shops they can be pretty tedious and you know having to worry about those for two weeks which more often than not you can kind of finish the exchange shop out of those uh, within the uh, the first week or so as long as you're doing like the highest difficulty and stuff like that which a lot of players you know might not be able to do the highest difficulty um, but yeah, I don't know. I can definitely see where they're coming from with this one. We'll just have to see how it kind of plays out and uh, we'll see what their new update schedule looks like whenever they do the next notice. Upcoming July events. The number seven is very special to 7DS in a number of ways. To celebrate the beginning of summer, the Grand Cross second anniversary festival part two will begin next week. New Oslo and Hawk, our cute mascot known for their awesome party vibe, will join you in the celebration. So they're basically, I mean, they've already released the trailer at this point. We already know that Oslo and Hawk is coming. Um, three fan art costumes created with the participation of knights all over the world will be available as gifts in future events. Join the, uh, the events and get costumes for adorable Valenti, beautiful Awakened Lilia, and Fierce Easton. So... Honestly, this is really cool. I kind of wish they would do more content like this where, you know, people from the community had a chance to design costumes uh, for the characters and they're giving them out completely free, which is very, very nice because costumes, <laughs> in my opinion, are one of the like the most <sighs> obnoxious things to have to worry about in this game, because not only do you have to pay 30 diamonds for a UR piece of equipment or for a UR piece um, like cosmetic, but you kind of need them uh, if you want to be in the top of like PvP and stuff like that because it equate like it's gonna contribute to your CC and all that stuff. So having to worry about not only summoning for the character but buying all their costumes and this and that and upgrading them and everything like that, uh, it's kind of nice for them to just give out free costumes every so often because there's a lot of characters that don't even have the maximum amount of costumes yet. So. These costumes are really cool because they were designed by the community. They look really good. I think they did a really good job of pulling them off and making them look good in the game as well. So it's cool that they're giving them out for free. I really do like that a lot. All right. Chapter one of the Grand Cross original series, Ragnarok, will soon be released to keep you cool in July. As we announced in the world premiere, Ragnarok is a Seven Deadly Sins Grand Cross original story and a new adventure for the Sins. We've worked hard to prepare something new through the expanding or through expanding the universe of the original series. There will be many things to enjoy, including the first adventure of the original series in chapter one, three Ragnarok original characters, the World Tree and Get and or wait, the World Tree to Get Growth Materials, and Grimnir's book, where you can gain a deeper understanding of Ragnarok universe. So I think this is kind of cool. I think Grimnir's book is basically going to be um, like a side thing that you can kind of access and look into the lore and everything like that of the Ragnarok world, which is kind of neat because if you're going to be super interested and invested in this sort of like side story, uh, I think they're going to give you a place to sort of look into it and read more if you want to, which is kind of cool. So, uh, 100 diamonds and a Ragnarok SSR hero and a costume set will be provided to celebrate the release of the, Grand, or the Ragnarok Chapter 1 in the 720 update, which can be claimed until 823. There will also be a very special social media event prepared around that time. So, 720 is uh, about two weeks away, which makes sense because... Uh, Whenever, you know, this next update comes out, that's Hawk and Oslo. And then two weeks after that will be the first Ragnarok update, which sounds, you know, about right, par for the course. Um, this is obviously the biggest thing. Getting 100 free diamonds is also really, really nice. The free Ragnarok hero, um, as long as it's the exact same as Korean JP, which it 
probably will be is going to be Thonar, which is um, kind of interesting. She might not get the most use out of, uh, for most players because she is basically a sort of like supporty style unit that you kind of put on your Belmoth raid teams. Uh, because if I'm not mistaken, it makes it to where her passive works in deathmatch and she's a green unit, which means she can either be used for Grey Demon or Belmoth raids, but both of her attacks are physical, like, melee attacks, so I don't think you're really going to use her um, in uh, Grey Demon. But the whole idea is that you cleanse debuffs off of yourself, and it activates her passive, which gives you attack-related stats buffs, or it might be like attack and attack-related stats. I can't remember exactly how it's worded, but she will be the free character, which is pretty neat. And they do give you a free UR costume set, so it's the, the entire set. You get the weapon, the, the headpiece, and the outfit, um, which is pretty interesting. I'm not the biggest fan of the way it looks. I did log in on JP and Korea just to kind of see what it looked like and mess with it a little bit, but uh, I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I mean, it is free, so you really can't complain too much. But uh, yeah, this is honestly going to be pretty nice. Not only are they giving out you know free diamonds, which means that you can summon for the new characters if you're interested in it, but uh, if you don't already know, it's basically going to be uh, Sigurd uh, is one of the characters on the banner, Thonar is the other character on the banner, and then there is a new blue Lost Vein character uh, as well, which is pretty interesting. So if you've already invested a lot into your other Lost Vein, uh, you're going to already have those cosmetics and stuff like that ready to go for the new one. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> I don't know. He's not a festival unit though, so it's kind of interesting, and he has the same ultimate, which means that you're going to have to kind of wail on him if you really want his ult to do as much as the other Lost Veins. Um, or well, not as much as, because I mean, not everybody has a maxed out Lost Vein, but I don't know. For him to do like max damage, you want him to obviously be like <laughs> maxed out, which is kind of annoying, but it is what it is. Uh, this is the only, or this is only the beginning of for Ragnarok. This content is planned to be like a 24 episode anime that will continue to unfold until next year. With the update for each uh, chapter, new Ragnarok heroes and game modes will also be added, including a boss battle requiring a new strategic approach. I think this is really interesting. Um, also, in the fourth quarter, a new type of boss raid will be added to the Knighthoods, where knights can upgrade demonic beasts from the Ragnarok mythology and compete with other players. Uh, the development team has been working hard on the Ragnarok series. We hope that you'll enjoy it. So it seems like they're really trying to push like as much as they can into the Ragnarok stuff, which is really cool. Um, you know, with new boss battle uh, with new strategy or new strategy stuff seems really cool. Hopefully, it won't be like super like annoying strategy stuff and actually like interesting fun mechanics. Uh, but you never know. It and some some people might call it annoying. Some people might think it's fun. It really just depends. It's going to go either way with that one. Um, a new boss raid with your knighthood seems kind of interesting, um, and I guess it says can upgrade demonic beasts from the Ragnarok mythology and compete with other players, so <laughs> I don't know exactly how that's going to work um, or what demons it'll be, but it sounds like it'll be kind of cool. I always really like the original demons and stuff like that that they do. All of the knighthood bosses, in my opinion, have really cool designs and uh, are pretty interesting in themselves, so I think that they'll probably end up blowing that out of the water and it'll look really cool, so I'm looking forward to that a lot um but yeah lastly we've prepared a gift to show our appreciation for the uh for your love and support please log into the 7ds for five days from 7-2 to 7-6 to get gifts from the developers in your inbox so uh they've already started this but they've been giving out some cosmetic upgrades um to, uh, no not tomorrow tomorrow we'll be getting this but uh i think this video will come out tomorrow so uh, we're going to get three SSR pendants, which I just made a video about the other day. They really need to start giving out way more SSR pendants. Uh, although three is enough to limit break one time, <laughs> it would be nice to be able to do way more than that. So, uh, And then lastly, we'll get some Super Awakening coins, which is pretty cool. So uh, yeah, I don't really have anything else to go over. That's pretty much the whole notice, so that's pretty much it. Hopefully... Um, there, I think they did do like a special login event and stuff like that leading up to the release of the Ragnarok update. So that should be pretty cool too. Some extra free stuff, but it looks pretty promising. Hopefully, you know, we'll get to see what this new content schedule looks like and uh, some more of this cool stuff whenever it comes out for the global version. So hopefully uh, that should do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to subscribe for more content in the future and I will see you guys in the next video.